In the previous video, we talked about how Ner'zhul was spreading his influence and dominion over the lands of the frozen north. All those who dared resisted him, paid with their lives, even in death. Now, it was time to move on to the next step of the Legion's plan, to envelop Lordaeron in the Plague of Undeath, a plague which would reap the souls of all of those living and deliver them into the power-hungry hands of the Lich King. However, as powerful as Ner'zhul was, he could not do this alone. Ner'zhul decided to extend his consciousness throughout the world, reaching out to all of those who sought more power. By doing this, Ner'zhul attracted the attention of one of the most powerful magi in Dalaran, Keltuzad. Keltuzad, curious as to this mysterious being who presented the promise of unimaginable power, ventured to the frozen north where he journeyed through Ajul Nerub and Nax Ramis. However, Keltuzad was actually frightened by what he saw. He contemplated fleeing for his life, but he could not. The Lich King surrounded him with wraiths and made it very clear that the time for second thoughts had passed. He would serve the Lich King, in living or in death. With no choice, Keltuzad reluctantly obeyed, but only initially. Not long after, Keltuzad began to enjoy his work under the Lord of Undeath. He soon established a strong sense of loyalty to his new master, and was eventually tasked with the mission of amassing a strong cult following in Lordaeron that would be loyal only to the Scourge. Keltuzad traveled to the human kingdoms with the false identity of a virtuous religious man who sought to uplift the peasants while also seeking to maintain the security and the wealth of the nobles. The people, both with the prospect of a better life and with the promise of securing their riches, soon flocked to the necromancer in droves. What Keltuzad did not tell them, however, was that they would be serving the Lord of Undeath. This secret he reserved for only his most trusted followers and subjects, but those who initially joined the cult or who sought to join, strangers who were interested in nothing more than a better life for themselves and their loved ones, would be oblivious to the nightmare that was to come. Those who resisted would serve in undeath, either as necromancers or as fodder, even in the necromancers' experiments. Thus was born the Cult of the Damned. Keltuzad soon amassed a sizable and powerful following and decided to mix Skullomance, the catacombs beneath an ancient human fortress located in what is now known as the Western Plaguelands, their hideout. It is here where necromancers were trained in the dark arts, where kidnapped individuals were brutalized, tortured, and hacked to pieces in nightmarish experiments, and also where Keltuzad would construct the Plague of Undeath. See, before Keltuzad left Northrin for Lordaeron, he had also taken with him several specimens which contained strains of the plague, and after modifying it to make the strain more resilient so that it could survive out of its incubation environment for prolonged periods, Keltuzad had constructed the Plague of Undeath that is widely known to this day, which would also bring Lordaeron to its knees. However, all of this did not happen overnight. It took approximately three years for Keltuzad to amass the cult and develop his strain of the plague, and all the while, the other races of the world, they were not just simply standing idly by, they had their own affairs to worry about. It was during this time that the alliance was splintered. Bonds forged within the first and second wards were dissolved by the High Elves of Quelthalas, Gengramian of Gilneas, and various others. But why? because the Alliance showed signs of weakness. In these years, Orgrim Doomhammer, the former war chief of the Horde, had escaped from imprisonment, causing many of the people to fear a third war between the Alliance and the Horde. However, this would never come, well at least not with the enemy that they had in mind. Soon after, Thrall, the Lord of the Clans, would break free from his life of servitude under a dayless Blackmoor, and with the help of Orgrim Doomhammer and Gromash Hellscream, the young warchief would unify the Orcish people and give them a purpose to live and fight yet again. This caused internal strife and conflict within the Alliance. Many of the kingdoms did not trust one another. They simply did not think that either was capable of defending the other, plus they had to keep their people safe. Why throw in their lot with an alliance that can't even keep prisoners in their prisons? It also didn't help that Lady Prestor, otherwise known as Anixia, the daughter of the fallen earth warder, Neltharion, was also at this very point in time, sowing seeds of doubt and distrust within the ears of the leaders of the alliance. Everything was falling into place, and Kil'jaeden observed all of this with glee. The Eredor Lord reached out to his loyal subject, the Lich King, and instructed him to begin the distribution of the Plague of Undeath immediately. The Alliance was so caught up in the threat of the Horde that they completely were unaware of the events within Northrin. 
Furthermore, they were also unaware of the Cult of the Damned, who under Kel'Thuzad had established a devious way in which to distribute the plague. Throughout the years, Kel'Thuzad and his followers established close ties with the heads of the families that ruled over Lord Ron's granaries. This made it extremely easy for them to sabotage the grains within the Eastwell, the lands now known today as the Plaguelands, and contaminate them with Kel'Thuzad's modified version of the Plague of Undeath. You see, Kel'Thuzad did not modify the plague without a reason. He knew that in time, the plague would need to be perfected so that not only could the plague be unnoticeable to the normal eye, but also so that it could survive in a regular environment, long enough for it to be introduced into its new environment, be distributed to its destination, and then be consumed by its host. Kel'Thuzad's plague had worked to perfection. So expertly hidden was the plague that even days after its distribution, the human kingdoms were still unaware of any presence of any plague. Given time, however, the elderly and the children began displaying signs of migraines, fevers, and mild episodes of fainting. Nothing too out of the ordinary, certainly nothing that would take priority over the rise of Thrall's new horde. However, soon after, entire families became sick or went missing. Then entire villages. This could no longer be ignored. The human kingdoms began dispatching patrols priests, and even magi to investigate. However, none knew or were able to discover the origins of the plague. None knew that this new threat would be a precursor to another Burning Legion invasion. As things progressed in Lordaeron, under the supervision of Kel'Thuzad and the Cult of the Damned, Ner'zhul in Northrend became impatient with his current predicament. Every single second that the Dreadlords and Kil'jaeden lorded over him, Ner'zhul loathed and he couldn't wait for the day that he could break free from the Legion. However, as powerful as Ner'zhul was, the fact that he was immobilized in an icy cask proved debilitating. In order for Ner'zhul to extend his psychic powers and will unto the world without restraint, he would need a champion. A champion who was not bound inside a set of armor within a frozen prison. A champion devoted solely to him, who would act as his fist, imposing the might of the damned upon all of those who would dare defy the Lich King. However, there was one big issue with this plan, the Dreadlords. The Nath regime kept a close tab on Ner'zhul, and should the Lich King enact this plan on his own without their approval, he would be punished severely by Kil'jaeden. Instead, Ner'zhul used his wits to outsmart them. Ner'zhul studied them and played off of their emotions. The Nath regime may have been watching Ner'zhul, but Ner'zhul had also been watching the Nath regime. He knew all of their secrets, even their greatest fear, failing to deliver the Plague of Undeath onto the human kingdoms, thereby earning the ire of the Deceiver. Ner'zhul presented them with the plan of finding an agent who would act as the Scourge's champion, but Ner'zhul did this in a manner in which it made it seem like it was the Dreadlord's idea to come up with the champion, not the Lich King's. Therefore, it looked as if Ner'zhul was obeying the Dreadlord's commands, not the other way around. Ner'zhul assured them that the best way in which the plague would be delivered successfully is if the Scourge had more resourceful champions at its command, using Kel'Thuzad as the prime example in order to support his stance. For it was through Kel'Thuzad that the Scourge had amassed the Cult of the Damned and was in the process of bringing Lordaeron to heal. The argument was hard to dispute, and the Dreadlords unanimously agreed with the idea. With their approval, Ner'zhul broke off Rossmorn from his icy cask and allowed it to fall into the icy lands of Northrend. For he knew that when the time came, his champion would discover Frostmourne and wield the legendary blade in an attempt to save his people. But by doing so, he would also lead to their downfall. For once an individual wielded Frostmourne, it would enslave them to the Lich King's will. And Ner'zhul's will was to make the Legion suffer, no matter the cost. Only Kel'Thuzad was aware of his master's plan, for Ner'zhul was so confident in the Necromancer's loyalty that he entrusted in him with nearly all of his secrets, and for good reason. Kel'Thuzad is perhaps the most loyal servant the Lich King has ever had. When the time came, Kel'Thuzad promised to the Lich King that he would betray the Legion as well. All the pieces were falling into place. Every single day, Ner'zhul was a step closer to enacting his plan, to separate all ties between he and the Legion. The only thing left, however, was to find out who his champion would be. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like this in the future. And until next time, I will see you all later.